Can you tell me, are the rumors true? The bigger the Oracle logo, the faster the car goes? <laughs> I certainly hope so, because it can't get much bigger, right? <laughs> We went on this journey starting in 2021 with Oracle as an innovation partner. They joined us to first start building the Paddock, which is our wonderful online fan platform. And now we've expanded that search for new opportunities, experimenting with what else we could do in the cloud because we were like, there's a lot more to this than just fans. There's a lot more we can actually do with the engineering side of our business. We've actually found that Oracle can be an incredibly valuable partner for Red Bull Ford Powertrains, which is developing the 2026 engine. People use the terms engine and power unit interchangeably, but that's not exactly true, is it? Can you tell us the difference between the two? Exactly right. So there's a very subtle difference. The engine is really just the internal combustion engine, or you often hear people talking about the ICE or the ICE, which is just the part of the engine where the combustion's happening. That traditional, if you like, petrol-fired thing that's pumping up and down with cylinders and pistons and all that stuff, that's the ICE. But in Formula One, we have lots more elements to our power unit that sort of make it up. We also have hybrid systems. Currently, the engine has two different types of energy recovery. It also has a controller unit, and it also obviously includes the transmission and all the electronic controls across that. So it's a complex beast. There's lots of different pieces to it, and we want to make sure that when we're talking about the power unit, we're thinking about the whole package, the whole thing together. So how has the Formula One engine evolved over time? Now, that's a, that's a really fun story, actually. So I think if you look back in the history of Formula One, it's experimented with lots of different displacements, like different sizes of engine, uh, different numbers of cylinders. All the engine components tend to be engineered towards very, very high precision, high speed, lightweight, kind of racy designs. When we first joined the sport back in 2005, um, there was a V10, then it went down to a V8 for a long time, and then they introduced a small hybrid system, and then a bigger hybrid system with this twin energy recovery system. And we're now evolving further. In 2026, the sport introduces the next generation of engine. So they're as powerful as they are today, more than a thousand horsepower, but they're greener. We are taking on the challenge of designing that engine. We're keeping that V6 1.6 engine as the core in the ICE, but we're adding a sort of 50% more in hybrid power. The F1's regulations for the 2026 power units are 78 pages long. Mm -hmm. Why don't you read us a few? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, can you describe, from a designer's perspective, what are some of the biggest changes? So there's quite a lot of fundamental changes in the regulations. So one of the really big ones is the change in the fuel flow rates. Currently, the, the power units are 100 kilograms per hour. We're actually changing this now to being around about 70% of the current, current level. So that changes quite a lot the energy balance that's in the system. There's also some other changes around the way that the engine operates. So we've lost the variable length intake manifold, which changes the way the engine tunes and the engine behaves. And we've also lost the MGUH, which is the, the heat part of the energy recovery on the current power unit. It is more hybridized as well. So the MGUK, which is the kinetic energy system on the power units, that's increasing up to 350 kilowatts. So all these are big technical challenges that we have to basically address when we're laying out this new power unit for 2026. Can you describe the challenge that Oracle Red Bull Racing has taken on? What, what's required to design and test and build a Formula One engine from scratch in time for the 2026 race season? Well, it's an insane challenge that we've taken on to become effectively a startup to produce our own Formula One engines. You're talking about six and a half thousand individual components within one engine. It's massive, but in exactly the same culture that we've applied to the race team, we've established in Red Bull Powertrains. You know, in that time, we've recruited people, we've put assembled a team together of of about 400 people. We've built a facility, a state-of-the-art, best-in-class dinos and infrastructure. So it's been monumental, the task that we're, we're taking on. 
When Powertrain first started, we had two simulation engineers, no baseline models, we didn't understand what solvers we were going to use, and Oracle's worked with us on the Powertrain side, where we had started with no environment whatsoever to build an environment from the ground up. We put a lot of reliance on development in the digital world. So just like when we develop and design the race car, we want to do a lot of CFD or computational fluid dynamic analysis. We're actually simulating things like how the fuel flows out from the injector nozzle into the cylinder and how it combusts and how the air flows through the turbocharger. And we're looking at that in such minute detail. We're kind of generating our own learnings as we go to help us refine and perfect the design that will hopefully give us the best performance. The Oracle technology has allowed us to have you know, class-leading high-performance computing and high-performance computing is critical to doing high-quality simulation and using it to optimise things early on in our design process. We can have a big step forward, basically. With Oracle, we were able to use OCI, we were able to experiment to figure out how we were going to run the department. And once we understood, we were able to scale it up easily as the team grew and as the models became more complex. For us, three years might sound like a long time, right? But it's really not that long. Could you do this as quick as you are if you weren't running in the cloud? The flexibility that you get from cloud infrastructure is incredibly valuable and it helped us just scale up and get going and hit the ground running really fast. The power unit is being designed in the same campus alongside the chassis, so the synergies between those two in terms of design can be closer, which we're already really understanding that synergy well. The team just work really well around it, the drivers feel really comfortable in it. With Oracle information and data we're able to process, it just enables you to make a more informed decision, make better decisions. As any CEO, you've got to be spinning plenty of plates and there's, there's what's going on today, but you've got to invest in tomorrow to look after tomorrow. So what we're doing in Rebel Powertrains is looking after the future. We have support from Oracle. We're not um, committed to what has been gone before. So we literally have a clean sheet of paper and regulations, and we've got the attitude to win. Hey, did you like what you learned? Make sure to check out this video or this link, and of course, subscribe now.